a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, He scatters abroad, He gives to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You are being enriched in every way for all generosity, which through us produces thanksgiving to God. The Word of the Lord.
to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. And then I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogue and on the street corners, so that others may see them. And then I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance, so that they may appear to others to be fasting. And then I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to others to be fasting, except to your Father, who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. God can do. 
and you will see what God still does, even in our own time. He was born into a rich aristocratic family, the firstborn, and of course, literally, the heir to his family's fortune. But he felt that the Lord was calling him. He felt the call to priesthood. His family tried to dissuade him, to discourage him from becoming a Catholic priest. They drew his attention to the enormous wealth that he would inherit. The enormous wealth in the family, the opportunities he had to enjoy life outside the priesthood. This, however, did not deter him. He renounced his enormous wealth and joined the Jesuits. He joined the Jesuits. While still in formation for the priesthood, an epidemic broke out towards the end of the 16th century, just as we experienced during the COVID. An epidemic broke out. Aloysius eventually suffered like others. He dedicated himself, cared for the sick, just like many of you did your best to take care of one another during the COVID. While caring for the sick, he himself was infected. He became sick and finally died. Due to his extraordinary piety, he was beatified only 14 years after his death. He was beatified. Rest in the title of being recognized as blessed in the Catholic Church 14 years after his death and was eventually canonized a saint in the year 1726. Three years after, in the year 1729, St. Aloysius was declared the patron saint of students. Till today, he still recognized as the patron saint of students, and in the year 1926, he was named patron of all Christian youths. So every Christian youth, as of now, is expected to invoke the intercession of St. Aloysius Gonzaga. We invoke the intercession of St. Aloysius on all our young people, as parents, as grandparents. Let us continually invoke the intercession of St. Aloysius on our young people. May he help our young people to find their way through life to God, who gives through direction and fulfillment in life. My dear brothers and sisters, in the light of the life of St. Aloysius and contemporary trend in culture, I want us to reflect on the injunction of Jesus Christ that when we give arms, we should not allow our left hand to know what our right hand is doing. This means, this simply means that we should not broadcast our arms giving or any help rendered to another. This injunction challenges us to pay our attention to our intention or motivation for our action. When I'm doing charity, when I'm helping people, what is my motivation? What is my intention? Are we motivated by the desire to draw our attention to ourselves so that people will recognize us, praise us for our acts of charity? Or are we primarily focused on helping other human beings? Helping another person created in the image of God. If we tell ourselves the truth, my dear brothers and sisters, we know that there is always a risk that we do a lot of things to impress people. It is very human. Only very few people do good works without wanting to draw attention to themselves. Only few people do good works and insist on amenity. Many would like to donate, 
brutality and then let it be publicized. For such people who insist on anonymity, the acclaim and glory should go first and foremost to God. God who enabled them in the first place to be in a position to render such service. This shows a level of spiritual and human maturity that not many people attend. Not many people attend this spirituality. This is the challenge Jesus places before us as Christians this morning. This is the challenge the Lord is presenting to us this morning. We must seek to do good works, not for our glory, but for the glory of God. To cultivate such a spirit, we have to die to self and seek to do all things for the glory of God, as St. Paul tells us in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 21. And as St. Aloysius Gonzaga did in his everyday life, my dear brothers and sisters, as we continue to do charity, when we arrive this morning, your pastor inform me of how generous you are, how generous the parish community is. And I went to the other side and saw for myself. So I congratulate you. I thank you for that disposition to help those in need. May I invite you to reflect on yourself. Are you among those who have a form of spirituality that you do things not for your own glory, but for the glory of God? As we human beings, we are still on a journey to this goal. All of us, we are still aspiring. We are on a journey to this goal of doing things not to our own glory, but the glory of God. We pray God to help us to live always and totally for his glory and not for our own glory. Amen.
Honor of Him, Prayer of St. Francis, number 534.
By the blood of Christ, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, show support, salt, and courage by so great a cloud of goodnesses. We may run as detours in the rest before us, and when we die, the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. Yeah. And so, with the angels and dark angels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we are glad.
protect eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Bring us who have been fed with the food of angels, O Lord, to serve you in purity of life, and following the example of St. Aloysius, whom we honor today. May we persevere in constant thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before examining uh, parts of the final blessing, I would just like to, on your behalf, thank you, Your Eminence, for being with us today to celebrate the Eucharist, to share so beautifully about our saint of the day, Aloysius Gonzaga. Immediately following the Mass, there will be a uh, reception in the parish hall, an opportunity for you to uh, greet His Eminence, and also uh, to express our gratitude again for your generosity in affording us in our diocese so many priests who are serving in a variety of capacities. So we thank you again, Your Eminence, for being with us today. We wish you many years of blessings and health and happiness in your ministry to your own diocese and to the Universal Church. I thank you once more, Father Greg, and the pastoral team, and all of you, my brothers and sisters, for making our time to be here this morning. I know without me, you would have celebrated your mass, but it's really a privilege for me to be here and to see all of you. I appreciate this gesture and pray the Lord to continue to bless each and every one of you. We shall be well with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. As we conclude Mass today, please join in singing, O God, Be Our Lord Praising, number 547.